Hello? I want to suck your cock! <laughs> to whom do I have the pleasure of speaking? Bob, is that you? I'm afraid there's no one here by that name. I'm terribly sorry. But don't hang have... up. I'm intrigued. I thought I was calling a friend of mine. Well, maybe we could be friends. Well, I suppose Bob isn't really a friend. You suck off your enemies? Some punishment? <laughs> Well, it's... So I suppose if you've got really sharp teeth... Bob and I have telephone sex together. Oh, I'd like to try that. Really? Yes. Uh, where do I put the receiver? <laughs> oh, no, no. We talk dirty to each other and jack off together. Oh, well, that sounds acceptable. Are you sure? Yes, but you'll have to begin. You're the expert. <clears throat> Are you horny? To some extent. Do you have a big cock? No, not really. You're supposed to say that you do. But I don't. It's rather small, actually. Listen, if you tell me you have ten inches, I'll be whoever you want. Captain of the football team, sweaty construction worker, mayor of North York! No, I'm not into fantasy. My name is Frank and I'm a bank teller. Oh, a bank teller with a big cock. <laughs> oh, all right, all right. Large biceps, hairy chest. If you insist. Oh, do you have a washboard stomach? Who doesn't these days? Go on, good, 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 good. No, uh, let's go down. Let's pretend that I'm one of your customers coming up to your counter at the bank. Now, what do you say? How may I help you, sir? I'd like to make a withdrawal. <laughs> yes? I'd like to withdraw that big cock from your pen. I'll have to speak to the manager about this. <laughs> Hello? Hello? I'm afraid we've had a bit of a run on cock today. I can give you uh, Canadian dollars, American dollars, or Japanese yen. Well, I already have a yen for cock. Yours. I want it now. In the back of your bank book, it clearly states that we can require seven days' notice for a major withdrawal. Here's my bank book. All 12 inches of it. Oh, you do have a large balance, don't you? I shouldn't say this, but it's a waste for you to put so much money in a passbook account. Maybe I should take it out then. Definitely. A mixture of bonds and treasury bills will give you the same flexibility. Oh, I love flexibility. And a far greater rate of return. What are you making on that account now? Four, five percent? I don't know. You don't know? You've got the entire bulk of your estate invested in a single place and you don't even bother to find out the interest rate? How can you plan for the future? I'm not interested in the future, only the present. To today's future? Today's future is tomorrow's present. When the present becomes the past, you'll be glad you plan for the future. This isn't working. I think it's going splendidly. Before long, I'll have sold you an RRSP. <laughs> I don't want an RRSP. I want sex. Ah, but you can't have good sex unless your mind is at ease. And how can your mind be at ease if you're not on firm financial footing? Listen, I don't have any stocks or bonds, and, and I have a very good sex life. You only think that you do. I used to think so too until I got my investments in order and then I discovered what I'd been missing. Such as? Strong erections whenever I want them. I have one right now, for instance. I lost mine the minute you started talking about interest rates. <laughs> I now have full control over ejaculation. I can last two hours or I can last five seconds. I attribute this to a high growth mutual fund. This kills me. You say you're not into fantasy, yet stocks and bonds makes you a sex god? No, only the stocks have an aphrodisiac effect. The bonds don't do a thing for me. You're absolutely bonkers. Well, if you'd like to find out for yourself, maybe we can get together later for dinner and then go back to my place. <laughs> Robert said eight. It's a date. <laughs> Hello, David. 
They've let me come for a visit. I can't stay very long, though. Company rules, they said. It's good to see you again. You look well. I'm glad. Are you moving? Can't say I blame you, really. I suppose I'd be doing the same thing. I realize that you can't see or hear me. They told me that this was going to be a rather one-sided conversation. First of all, I feel just great. I wanted you to know that. I'd become so accustomed to pain that I'd forgotten what it's like to live without it. Oh, but now, no pills, no needles, no machines, no doctors, no mess. It's like the last day of school and there's no more school in September. You know, they never had to tell me how sick I was. I could just see it in their faces. To be so dependent. Maybe I should have just let go. I might have saved us both so much. So much. I never expected to die at 28, you know. Especially not that way. It's hard not to be bitter sometimes, even now. Oh, David, there is so much I wish I could still say. But what's the use? What's done is done. I miss you, David. I think about you all the time. I just want to hold you so much. I just want to touch you, feel your body again. Oh, but they said I couldn't make physical contact. They didn't want this to turn into, like, Poltergeist 3, thank you very much. Bad for public relations. I'll have to be satisfied with just looking. It's enough. You know. <laughs> I used to sit and just stare at you for hours when I was sure you wouldn't notice. I was always so amazed that this incredible, beautiful man loved me. I'm still amazed. Being here again reminds me of so many things. Do you remember? Weekend dinners with our friends. God, neither of us could go to save our lives. But nobody ever complained. At least not to our cases. And the beaches at sunrise. Sunday mornings. You and I nuzzling in bed for just hours. And you bring me breakfast in bed. Breakfast and a rose. Those roses. I'd wait for them, you know. Each one said that we had made it through another week of loving each other. Please don't cry. You know I can't bear it when you cry. I know you tried not when I was getting really sick. But when you're having such a horrible time of it, maybe worse, I don't know. At least I knew it was going to end eventually. And you tried so hard to keep me going. And you never stopped touching me. Such a simple thing. I loved you for that more than all the rest, I think. <sighs> Actually, I'm having a pretty good time of it now. It's a lot like what you'd expect. Very still and quiet. I'm not quite used to it yet, but I like it. <laughs> but I'll tell you one thing, whoever did all that decorating was definitely not gay. I mean, up there I have to wear all that white. Is it a cliché or what? I'm not even a winter. Well, I'll just have to accessorize. A silver belt here, some tastefully simple jewelry there. Oh, but you want to know what the best thing is? Nobody even cares if you're gay or straight or black or white or green. Everybody just is. Oh, <laughs> and I'll tell you something else. I wasn't going to put up with any bullshit. 
If they had made any fuss about my being gay when I arrived, it would have put on my best Betty Davis face, told them to go fuck themselves, and turned right around. <laughs> but they never said a word. Thank God. Is that that Robert Frost you bought me for my birthday? I almost forgot. I have stood still and stopped the sound of feet. When far away, an interrupted cry came over houses from another street. But not to call me back or say goodbye. And further still, at an unearthly height, <laughs> one luminary, luminary clock against, against the sky. The time, the time was, was neither wrong nor right. Nor right. I would be one acquainted with the night. Wait a minute. This is all my stuff you're packing away. What are you doing? These are my books. My clothes. My things. What are you doing? You're packing my entire life into these boxes. And then what? Am I to be packed off to goodwill so some stranger can paw off the things I, the things that we loved and shared? My God, David, think about it. They might not even be gay. How could you do this? This stuff is all that's left of me. When it's gone, so am I. How could you do this? This stuff doesn't mean anything to somebody else. Sorry, David. Please forgive me. I'm dead and I'm still a brat. What a drag. <laughs> you know, I really thought I'd be a better person after I was gone. This is depressing. I know you're not trying to get rid of me. I'd be doing the same thing if I was you. Do what you want with this stuff. Most of it's garbage anyways. Oh, but not the Peter Rabbit China. <laughs> Thank you. I have to go now, David. They're calling me back. I'm not finished yet! Be happy. Stay healthy. I almost forgot. If they knew I was doing this, they'd kill me. That's a lot. <laughs> Goodbye, David. Think of me. I love you. Standing still 
Sex. I don't know what I can or can't do. Oh, well, that's easy. Just call H and W. H and what? H and W, that Department of Health and Wealth. Oh, look, I'll call it for you. There you go. Good luck. Hello. Is this H uh, Health and Welfare? Yes. I wonder if you could. I wonder if you could give me some information on safe sex. My address? They want to know my address. Well, it's 31 Isabella, apartment 1720. 31 Isabella, apartment 1720. But why? <laughs> Don't anybody move! Okay, where? 
Where's the sex? The sex? I don't understand. We had a report of unsafe sex in this apartment. Oh, that's ridiculous. We're just friends. There's been no exchange of bodily fluids? You mean uh, donating blood? Blood, semen, urine, maybe even a slut. Oh, nobody donates urine or saliva, yeah. <laughs> Funny guy. Check the bedroom, man. Checking your lust level, just as I thought your oozing sexuality. Right off the scale! Have you had a recent orgasm? Don't really know. Gaze protection. You mean condoms? Well, I don't think you're very sexy. You shouldn't have said that, Alex. Go three men, ten seconds. Safe sex, safe sex, safe sex, safe sex, safe sex, safe sex, safe sex. Safe sex, safe sex, safe sex. Time to that chair. Leave his arms hey. free. What are you doing? Tighten up those thighs. <laughs> Synthetic rubber prophylactics, impermeable to the AIDS virus when used correctly. What's that thing between your legs? It's a baseball bat. Wrong! It's your very own erection. You're about to have sex with a man. What's the first thing you do? French kissing? <laughs> first, you put one of these on the back. Go ahead, put it on. But you don't need condoms for everything. Everything except mutual masturbation. If you're planning to attain orgasm, condoms are your best insurance, even with masturbation. And they make it a lot easier to clean up afterwards. <laughs> no towels to wash, no unsightly stains, everything neat and tidy. <laughs> Sounds like a real turn-off. It's a lot of fun, actually, once you get used fun. to it. Fun! Better than fun. Safe. You live to have a lot more orgasms right now. Right! There. Now, will you untie me? Not yet. Have you ever played, uh, doctor? No. <clears throat> I did. In my basement when I was about 12. With, uh, Johnny Coolahan. He was 15. Now, those were the days. I bet you never use these. These are real doctor's gloves. Very handy for those intimate examinations. But, but I don't want to have sex wrapped in plastic! Why can't I just do the things that Johnny and David used to do in a basement? The whole point of sex is to get close to each other, to feel each other. Well, it's no good if you have condoms and gloves and everything getting in the way so you can't even touch someone. Four, three, ten seconds. Safe sex, 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 safe Can I still kiss? French kissing is possibly risky. You can still dry kiss or wet kiss on intact skin. But why is it so complicated? Why is it so complicated? Because! Because the worst thing you could get from Johnny in the basement was a cold. If you met him now at a party and went home with him, you could get a lot worse. Prepare for safe sex. Hey, big guy. Yeah. We're gonna have to commandeer your bedroom. Sure. Uh, anything I can do to help? No, I don't think so. We prefer to work alone with the lock safe, right? Yikes! Another cold five down at Queen's Park! Come on, man! Ever since the election, I tell you. <laughs> if he gives you any trouble, you just give us a call, okay? Okay. Come on, man! We've got to get... Safe sex to Queen! Another coming <laughs> Maybe we should get out of the house. I don't know. Come on. You helped me when I was down. I've got two tickets to see a television show being made. But I've never seen a television show. Well, what's it called? Uh, gayer Than Thou. A new gay game show? Well, let's go! So 
um, are you enjoying your stay in Florida? Oh yes, I just love being gay. Shh. What's the problem? Why? Well, it makes people uncomfortable. What does? The fact that you're gay and not happy about it. Oh, but that's silly. It's wonderful being gay. I'm very proud of who I think. Why don't people just mind their own business? I agree. But it's still, it, it upsets people on the street when you go around saying, I'm a homosexual. <laughs> See what I mean? Oh, look, here's my neighbor, Bruce. Now, he is a real closet case. Hi, Bruce. Oh, hi. <laughs> Oh, when somebody doesn't want you to know that they're gay, we say that they're in the closet. Why? Because they're hung up about it? <laughs> no. They're just nervous about telling their family or friends or people that they work with. Hi, Joan. Hi. Gentlemen, it's time to once again play television's hottest new game show, Gayer Than Thou. And here are your hosts, Pat Howardchuck and that wizard of the flip cards, Dana White. Welcome. 
welcome to Gary the Now, the, the game show where contestants try to prove who is the most gay. Ooh, I just love it! Right. And how are you tonight, Dana? Well, I'm fine, fine. You know, I've almost finished my last course of treatment at the Betty Ford Clinic. Oh, you poor thing. I'm not ill, Pat. I just love hanging out with celebrities. I'll just bet. That's a lovely outfit you have on tonight. Oh, do you really think so? It took me just days to find it. Uh, I could tell. Well, why don't you go over and wait by the game board while I introduce our contestants? Go on. Oh, okay. All right, ladies and gentlemen. It's time to bring on those bags and dags, those panties and lezzies. And now, play for Kurt Gustine, R. Deborah. Peter, Kate, Ross, Clara, I serve the winner. And the winners of a five-point for the gayest team the Jim and Amy Baker. Susan, Rebecca, Laura Jane, Paul, Sean. You participate in three separate events to determine which team is the most gay. There are points for each event, and you can earn bonus points for anything the judges consider to be out of the ordinary or special in a gay way. You mean a gay or a lesbian way, don't you, Pat? That's right, Gertrude Stein! Hey! That's a five-point bonus for keeping the show politically correct. Oh. But beware, everyone, if you hear this sound. <laughs> that means that you're not being gay enough, and you lose points. So let's keep those heterosexual impulses well hidden. <laughs> Especially you, Jim and Tammy Baker. <laughs> All right, are you ready to play? Ready! I can't hear you. Ready! All right! Dana, what's our first game? That our first game is trivia. Yeah! Trivia, that's a good one. All right, Gertrude Stein, here's your first question. <laughs> what is Barbara Stanwyck's real name? Ruby Stevens. Right. Now. July 16, 1907. At 7:02 in the morning in Brooklyn, New York. Very good. The now, attending physician was Dr. Robert Fletcher. But only because. Regular doctor was away visiting his daughter Ruth. You tell the nurse was Susan Ackroyd. Then she and Dr. Fletcher were in Idaho. But that was only a rumor. They were seen oh, together a number of times on February 3rd, 19. All right, all right. Whoa. You guys get the 10 points. You guys are good. <laughs> Jim and Tammy Baker, you have your work cut out for you playing with these guys. All right, here's your first question. Within 10. What percentage of members of the Not So Amazons Baseball League are still good friends with everyone they slept with on their team? Speaking from experience, Pat will play 60%. Close enough, Tim and Tammy. All right, over to you, Gertrude Stein. Excuse me, Pat. I'd just like to say how much I love what you're wearing. And I think you're such a wonderful host. <laughs> Fatuous compliments and simpering insincerity. Hey, that's a 25 point bonus. <laughs> All right, Gertrude Stein, here's your next question. Who was the first person to say these immortal words? I need more space. I think we should have a more open relationship to see different people. Was it Brad Summerhays, Key West 72? What was that year again? Uh, 72? The year was actually 71. <laughs> shall, we, shall we give it to them? <laughs> hey! Whoa, 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 whoa. Good for you, Gertrude Stein. The judges obviously wanted to give it to you, but then who wouldn't? <laughs> Okay, back over to you, 
Jim and Tammy Baker. Here's your second question. Are you ready? Ready! How much is the Caesar salad at the Terrace Restaurant in Robinstown? I have a bit of a... $5.75. Oh, that's too bad. The correct price is five ninety-five. Oh, no oh, way. Oh, oh, hey, that is not fair. Y'all gave it the man we wanted to. Yeah! yeah. All right, here's your last question. And it's open to both teams. Ooh. What is the third cut of the second side of Andy Williams' Close Enough for Love album? Oh, oh. 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 Hurry, please. There is a time limit. I'm sorry, Pat. We just don't know. Oh, 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 any idea? We don't know either, Pat. Hey, you're both right for 10 points each. person would know the answer to that question. <laughs> Enough trivia. Now, before we go on, I understand that there is a contestant on the Gertrude Stein team who has just come up. Oh. Is that true? Who is it? Well, come on down and let's have a look at you. Well, what do you think of gay life so far? Well, it seems very nice. I have an act. Oh, that's enough, honey. It's only a half hour show. What do you say, audience? Shall we get the little woman 30 points for her team? Hey! Good for you, Gertrude Stein. Oh, temper, temper. We wouldn't want to lose points now, would we? Okay. On to our next game. What is it, Dana? That it's time for safe sex. Woo! Hey, it's always time for safe sex. Now, what I'm going to do is I'm going to give each team... What's this? The judges have just told me that there is a team member on the Jim and Tammy Baker team who has not brought along a condom oh. just oh. in case. Oh! oh. 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 Naughty, naughty! Oh. That's a high point penalty! Oh! oh. Alright, now. <laughs> in safe sex, I'm going to give each team two sexual situations, and I want you to tell me which one is safe. Got it? Got it! All right, Gertrude Stein, here is your first situation. A handshake good night, or being fucked without a condom. A <laughs> handshake good night, Pat. That's right, Gertrude Stein. I can tell you guys are going to be ready for just about anything. All right, over to you, Jim and Tabby Baker. Here's your first choices. Mutual masturbation or having a fist shoved up your ass. Would that be a mutual masturbation? That's right! Yeah! You've obviously been there, Jim and Tammy. Okay, Gertrude Stein, here are your next choices. Necking or sharing dirty needles with an Ivy drug user. Necking? You don't sound too sure, Gertrude Stein. Do you want more time to consider your answer? No, Pat. We want naked. Well, who doesn't? Oh, that's good for another ten points. All right, Jim and Tammy Baker, here are your last choices. Having a fist chucked up your ass by a dirty IV drug user who then fucks you without a condom, or celibacy. Oh. <laughs> Celibacy? You're right! <laughs> okay, you did pretty well on safe sex. Let's see how you do on... Wait just a second. I object to the land of this game. What about safe sex for women? Yeah. And the title of the show, it should be gayer and lesbianer than now. And I really, and I'm not... Very good, 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 good side. Oh. Stridency, militancy, and anti-sexist posturing all at once. Hey, that's a 25-point bonus. <laughs> <laughs> We are going 
work boots, and complete lack of undergarments. <laughs> the killer dyke can most easily... <laughs> Killer dyke can most easily be recognized by certain characteristics, namely the short masculine haircut, the cigarettes rolled up in the t-shirt, the proudly displayed armpit hair, <laughs> the numerous scars from fights in bars, <laughs> most important, the ever-present beer can. collect their prizes. Okay, Pat. Well, that's it for another fun-filled week on Gayer Than That. See you next time. Mr. Harold Damaris, who broke his ankle in the line of duty and couldn't be with us tonight. And to our very own Mary Harvey, who filled in on a moment's notice, and I'm sure you'll agree that she's just been... Tickets, sales, and t-shirts is going to go back into the community to support many worthwhile projects. Yeah, 
I like the counseling center. 923 Gays. Buddies in Bad Times Theater. The Lesbian Speakers Bureau in the Web. And the AIDS Committee of Toronto. Et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. And how those people in the audience, meaning you, can donate to the Lesbian and Gay Community Appeal by filling out the pledge form you'll find in your program and mailing it in to the Gay Community Appeal. With, With a, a big, big fat check. <laughs> Or you can be a volunteer and call the information line and just say, pick me, pick me. That ought to do it. Yeah. <laughs> can we get on with the show now? I am tired of being a straight man. <laughs> That'll be the day. <laughs> oh, I've got a really good joke. Oh, okay. Come on, come on. Yeah, what is this? What's this? You're, you're all very sweet. I guess I'm just a little homesick. Oh, how can you get home from here? I'm not really sure. I, the only places I've ever traveled to before were the, the Looking Glass House and, and Wonderland. I know how to get home from there. You do? Then we're in luck. We have a Wonderland right here in Canada. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> you do? Can we go there now? You yeah. bet. Let's do it. Trying to get back home. I do remember you. But you used to be such a cute little kid. What happened? I grew up. Oh. Pervert. Let's go, Lucille. <laughs> oh, excuse me. I'm Alex in Wonderland, and I'm trying to get home. Alex, call home. Call home. Oh, Harvey, you're such a screamer. What? <laughs> I don't want to go. Oh, Pardon me. Pardon me. You've got a child, so I know you'll understand. I'm Alice in Wonderland, and I'm lost. <laughs> oh, you're a transvestite! Come on, don't look! He touched my son! Help! Help! This just isn't working. Don't give up, Alex. But what's the use? I'm everybody's favorite example of childhood innocence. But here I am, grown up and gay. In a world full of neat categories, I'm a woman who keeps changing into a man. People just don't forgive that sort of thing. Oh, I don't know. I felt so cramped in the 19th century, but I feel so confused in this one. One minute everything seems so open, and the next minute, slam! There's a garden door shut in your face. And the golden key's just out of reach on the table. Oh, I just don't seem to fit in anywhere. I keep moving, but all I do is go in circles. It's like my whole life's a giant roller coaster. Well, I've been on a boat, but I've never been on a roller coaster. Already my 
stomach is spinning My brain's running wild And I feel like a girl again Boy again Well, like a child And there's nothing in front of me Just possibility Mounting right up to the sky At the top there's a pause And I know it's because we need time to think I'm going to die The war is wind, and the wind is pure And I never sinned, I was always sure That long, slow ride to the place where we all get on. Already my spirit is sagging. It's over and done, and the adults all turn away. Then they say, wasn't that fun? But the child God climbing up to the sky The forgiveness he found Isn't here on the ground And the coaster was telling a lie And I feel like I just want to isn't what I really want. I'll never go home again. Why? Your parents gonna object to you cross-dressing? <laughs> no. I want to keep on changing. Keep on growing and experiencing. Oh. Quick, Orange, find me a mirror. What do you want a mirror for? Just look into my eyes and I'll tell you you're a peach. No. I need a mirror. You see, some people take planes. Others travel by greyhounds. I take mirrors. That's how I travel. There's a show at the Canterbury Theatre. They probably have a mirror. Yep, Mylar and Mirrors. That's Canterbury. Oh, great! Well, let's go! <laughs> Queen, you're going to be on your head. 
Thank <laughs> you.